Hello, Business 630 students. My name is Professor Rick Hassey, and this is the first weekly lecture video for our fall two, fall two session, Corporate Finance. And I wanna welcome you to our class. I hope all of you have seen my introduction video, have uh, looked at Blackboard and uh, looked at the uh, syllabus of our class and ready to get started this uh, last week of October. This is an eight week corporate finance class. We cover a lot of material. I strongly urge you to uh, stay up to date with Blackboard and our videos. Uh, we have a YouTube, a YouTube playlist, which is another location where you can see all our videos of class lectures and videos that are, are mentioned in our, in our course study. Uh, also Blackboard every week, there's uh, videos and information set up as we proceed in our corporate finance class. We have 29 students in this class. <clears throat> And this is strictly a asynchronous. did I say that right? I probably didn't, uh, online class. There are no remote or lectures that you have to attend. Everything is online. You uh, watch these videos and my course uh, discussions at your leisure. And hopefully you keep up to date, <coughs> excuse me, with those on a weekly basis. I load a video every Monday of every week and uh, and that's how we proceed in this class. I have a office hours every Thursday night from six to eight o'clock. The link is on our syllabus. It's a Zoom student hours where you can click on that link and I'll be available every Thursday night to answer any questions. We don't have any case study work for a couple of weeks, but as things develop in this class, I'm sure you would take advantage of those student sessions. Also, you can post to the discussion forum and I'll show you that in a minute. You can send me emails or text messages and I'm available to you 24-7. Uh, as you'll see, I get back to you rather quickly. Uh, so if you have any issues or concerns during the course of our class, please feel free to let me know. But I, I, I wanna stress to you, this is an eight week class. We have a lot of material, a lot of work to study, and you can't get far behind. You have to keep up with the work during the course of our class. So I welcome you all. Uh, this week, uh, we have uh, uh, some work to do as far as reading an, an article that I have posted to Blackboard, and you are to select a company, and you are post a little bio about yourself in Blackboard, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So I want to welcome you all. This is a, a great class to keep up to date with what's going on in the corporate finance world these days. I'm sure a lot of you are somewhat involved in this uh, with your own jobs or careers. And I look forward to all your inputs and, uh, and feedback during the course of our class. This class is designed for you, nobody else. And uh, I look forward to your participation and your feedback to help me make the class as, uh, as good as possible. So let's begin. First of all, I hope you had a chance to look at our course syllabus. If not, please do so this first week of class. Uh, it's a, it's, this class is the corporate finance class, uh, CRN 1198 and 2949. It's an online course, no remote, just strictly online work. I mentioned earlier, our student office hours are on Thursday evenings from six to eight. Uh, you just uh, click on that link and I'll be there every Thursday night at your beck and call. If I'm not there right when you link in, I'm probably with another student. So just bear with me and I'll get to you as soon as possible. Uh, we have a, a YouTube channel. Uh, if you click on this uh, YouTube link, let's do that right now, see if this works. There's our YouTube uh, link and our front, my front page of my YouTube site. And what you wanna go is to playlists and you'll see a business finance or business 630 corporate finance fall to 2021. There it is right there. You just click on that and I'll, and that's our video we're gonna watch in just a couple of minutes for our first class. Also, uh, there is uh, other videos there. This is where I will post my class lecture in addition to the link in Blackboard. So this is a good playlist to hit YouTube. You have access to this at your leisure. It doesn't cost you a nickel and you have availability for this even after the class to use these videos in any other study or any work that you do. So this is your site to access information about corporate finance. So that's a pretty good thing.
So please feel free to read through Business 630 course syllabus. It gives you all our goals, our requirements. This is a textbook optional class. You do not have to have a textbook. I supply all the material in Blackboard, but it, some students still opt to use the textbook as a good reference material. I do not select any review problems from the textbook. As far as grading is material, I do give you some review problems if you wanna practice some things, but again, it is not a requirement of this class. We'll have four case studies in this class. The first one is due November 14th. Each case study is 20% of your grade. Now, case studies are where I give you a series of problems or one problem, and you have to answer those problems in relationship to the study that we're doing in the course. One case study is an APA formatted paper. Another case study is a spreadsheet analysis. Another case study is a PowerPoint analysis. So each case study has different presentation formats and different goals but they're part of understanding the learning material of corporate finance. You also have a case paper, which will be individual work of where I give you a company needing to make a finance decision, and you'll be doing a capital budget analysis of that company. And this paper will be uh, distributed to you or the case study will be distributed to you in about the third week of our course or third session. And then it'll be due the last week of our class. It's a case paper and a spreadsheet analysis combined. So that's our work in this class. And then I go on and defining all that in the syllabus, academic honesty, naturally all your work is done individually in this class. It's done out of class. So uh, you're, uh, there's a certain degree of academic honesty. If you use other resources other than the textbook, you have to note those resources in your casework as references. University mission, public relations, but also some important links. If any of you, you are students of Laverne, even though you're not coming to a regional campus or our Laverne campus, you are students of Laverne. Thus, you have the rights of all students to access information and as, as that, uh, get all other types of material. These are links to counseling, health services, safety, academic success center, all different types of links here if you so desire. And if you need any specific information about those, please feel free to ask. Also, since this is an online class, there's certain privacy issues. All the work is uh, unlisted on YouTube. All the work is encrypted and uh, you have the only access to this material. No one else will see your name, see your picture or anything having to do with this course. Also in the syllabus, I listed some important dates. Uh, when specific work is due, uh, case one, two, three, and four, uh, it says they're group case paper, but that is an individual case paper. That is not a group case paper. Uh, and uh, all the due dates of all our work, notice that last week of class, you have a case and a, uh, in another, you have two cases due that last week. Course evaluations are due December 20th, and I post all our final grades by Thursday, December 23rd. And here's our schedule of, of certain activities week by week. If it's in yellow, that means there's graded work to be done. Uh, don't worry about this electric case teams determined. That's, an, again, an individual case paper. I have to update our Blackboard for that. Our first case work is in the week three, due November 14th. And then all the material week by week that we will cover in this class. I do list some articles, uh, chosen articles uh, for during each, sometimes during the weeks. I have posted week one's article and I'll show you that just a, just a minute. There are articles that will be posted to Blackboard that are part of our study for the week that I would like you to review. So that's our syllabus and our schedule. So please get familiar with it, understand the due dates, understand when material is due. And if you have any questions or concerns, if you're going to be out of town, which doesn't mean anything, this is an online class, but if you're going to get have certain things to demand of you during this time period, please feel free to let me know and we'll work on that. As mentioned in our introduction video, here's our Blackboard site. 
uh, week by week, this course of study. I will update these weeks as we go for forward, but I'll give you a, a pretty good idea of what we'll be studying. If you have any uh, concerns or any discussions, you can go to the student discussion forum and there I have, you can post questions and comments to me, but week by week, here's our work that we're going to be doing this week. It's a student discussion forum on Part one is a biography. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Part two is to select a company that you might be interested in that we will be studying uh, for in a variety of different areas this, for, this, um, this semester or this um, term or session as they call them now. And also find me the beta of the company, which is the subject of our topic this week, risk and return from chapter six of our text. And I have a little PowerPoint presentation I'll show you in just a minute in that. So there's our discussion forum. Here's our first week study. As you can see, I have posted an article. I'd like you to read this. It's about a 10 page article, efficient, chaotic, what's the new finance? I'd like you to read that article, please. It's gonna be, you're gonna have something to do about this down the road in some of our case studies. So please, uh, and I will discuss this next week in my week two lecture. Uh, these are, here's our agenda for the week, which you saw at the very beginning. Just click on that, and this is what we're trying to accomplish th this week, and it gives you a good idea of key points to be familiar with going forward. Here's my original welcome video, and then our PowerPoint. Be a good idea without a textbook to look over these PowerPoints on a weekly basis. They can go over some of the key data of, of what our discussion, and then a variety of videos that you can play right on this site, or you can see these videos also in our YouTube playlist. So there's a good videos to establish our key ideas of the discussion this week. And all the case study work will be driven by these articles, these videos, these PowerPoints, and my lectures uh, for, as we get going into the case study work in a couple of weeks. One of the key things of this class, and this is an advanced MBA class, so I assume you know uh, somewhat most of the basic techniques of finance, what a stock is, what a bond is, and that sort of thing. These This first week, we kind of go over some of these first two weeks, we kind of go over some of this, because the bottom line of this class is to determine how the assets that you invest in create return, and how to manage that risk and return and how to manage the goal of investing in those assets. And that's the goal to maximize shareholder value, maximize the value of a company. That's what a corporate finance does. That's what financial management does. If you remember, there are three sources of finance or capital for a company, three legal sources, the borrowing of money, debt, the issuance of equity, and equity can be split between the issuance of stock or ownership in the company, be it public or private stock, and the making of profits. So debt, stock, profits is what finance businesses. And our job in this class is to make sure that you understand those techniques and understand the relationship of those and what they mean as far as determining risk and return. And this is a, a little thing uh, that some of you probably have seen before. One of the key reasons that ways that company stock and their value of the business go up is because you generate cash flow, you generate profit, you invest in uh, operating capital, and you create free cash flow or basically cash flow. And that cash flow is divided by the cost of your money to get that cash flow, the cost of capital, what it took you to purchase and get that cash flow. Over time, you add up the values of that, you get what is called the value of the company. And so come some of the key areas of this class is to determine how do we create value? How do we determine and generate cash flow? We invest in assets that produce a return, profits. What did it take us to get those assets? What did we borrow? What did we issue stock? What type of profits we used from prior periods? And what did it cost us to acquire that capital? Combine all that, we determine the actual value of the company. And that's what corporate finance is about. And that can be a for-profit or not-for-profit company as well. That's the key to this class and this study is understanding those concepts. And that's what we'll be going over in this class. And we'll be looking at examples and real-world examples. 
Our goal of finance is to get generate a return on investment, generate a return on investment in dollars, in percentages. One of the key financial um, determinants of any business, we'll talk about these a lot next week, is what is our return on investment? What, do we, what did, did it cost us and what did we generate as a return? For example, if we invest $1,000 and that $1,000 uh, brings us a return of 60 bucks, our return on investment is 6%. Pretty simple. It just can get a little bit more complicated. On Naturally, you add a few more zeros to that dollar amount as investment. And also, where did the money come from? And that's what we're going to study in this class. And, but one of the key things of driving this return of investment is what is the risk involved? A lot of you today probably would not buy stock in a company that makes nuclear reactors. Why? We don't use many nuclear reactors anymore. We have other sources of energy being developed in 2021. Solar, wind, a lot of other. The use of nuclear power is, is, is diminishing. It's just like, now is not the time to probably to invest in, uh, in, in coal because those industries are on the way down. They're still valid, they're still pr producing return, but they're not at the center of new development. So we wanna know what is the risk of investing? That's a key thing. And that's what beta and that concept of beta that I'm asking you to find out about your companies you select this week, that's why beta is so important to understand. And beta is trying to, trying to look at the probability and the return of different scenarios over time. For example, here, the most likely of making 6% off this investment that we just saw is 40%. But also there's a likelihood that it could only, it could lose 14% or even make 26%. What is the probability and the likelihood of making money or losing money? That, that plays a lot. If all of a sudden I won the lottery today, and I won uh, $2,000. Well, if I want to be make it safe and not lose any money, I'll put it in my savings account. I'm not going to get much return on that investment, but I know I'm not going to lose anything. But then I say, you know, I don't want to make 10 bucks a year on return. I want to make $200 of that $2,000. I want to make a 10% return. Well, maybe I'll invest it in a bond or invest it in the stock market, in an ETF, in a mutual fund. But no, I don't want to make I don't want to make 10%. I want to make 30% of my money. Well, then you probably invested in maybe a hedge fund or put it in a, a startup company that's just starting where the chance of failing is just as much as the chance of making money. It depends on your risk aversion. It depends on your ability to understand risk. And that's one of the key parts of this week's discussion is understanding what risk is. It's the probability of different scenarios. It's the, note, notice the probability diminishes over time as risk changes. And some of you have studied statistics and other areas of, of economics and finance, you know about standard deviation, the standalone risk of, if from average to out in the different areas of return. And we use this in historical analysis. And that's what beta is. Beta is a historical example analysis of the firm's risk in the market compared to the market. And they use a common formula in this called the capital asset pricing model. You, are need, you need to be familiar with this model. It determines what is the return on equity in a company. The return on debt is basically the interest rate on the debt. But what is the return on equity? Well, it has to do with the market, has to do with different, different risk in the market and the risk of your particular company. And that's where the capital asset pricing model helps us to determine that. And to determine that return, we have to know the risk of the company in the market. It's called beta. Beta can range from zero, which is zero risk, which is not too much of that, to one, which is average width risk, which is basically the beta of a Standard & Poor's or a Dow Jones Industrial Mutual Fund. That's average risk is one or as high as six or seven or eight. And that would be the risk of investing in Greek bonds or the risk of investing in Radio Shack. Very unlikely you're gonna get your money. And that's a high risk with a higher beta. Where is your company that you selected in this class? Where is their beta? It's probably anywhere between 0.4 to 
to one to two in that general area. But that's the risk of most high tech or most corporate corporations that are you'll be picking is it's very little, there's some risk, but not much risk because the companies are managed well and doing well. So we need to be familiar with risk and return and the capital asset pricing model, the beta of a company are ways to understand this risk. And I need you to study these concepts, study the capital asset pricing model, especially this equation here. The return on a particular company stock is the beta of the company times the market premium. The market premium is defined as the rate of return in the market minus the rate of return in the risk-free rate. Market return is a beta of one, risk-free risk rate is a beta of zero. That delta times the specific risk of your company gives you the expected return or the, the expected rate of return on investing in that company. And this is a historical analysis, taking information from the last four or five quarters or four or five years on a quarterly basis to determine that. And that's what beta is. Beta changes usually every quarter as the return changes or the return or profits of a company that they report. So this is called a security market line. The required return on an investment is the risk-free rate plus the beta times the market premium. This is a very important concept that we need to refresh ourselves with this first week because this is going to lead into a lot of other different discussions during the course of our class. Because remember, the goal of financial management, the goal of corporate finance is to maximize value. How do you maximize value to the, to the people who invest in you? You pay back loans. You pay the interest and you pay back loans. How do you maximize value of the people who buy your stock or, or invest in private equity in your business? You give them a return on their investment. You give them dividends. The stock price grows. Why does the stock price grow? grow? Because the company or the people who invest in stocks in the market, the supply and demand generate generates a, a rising stock price and you everybody makes money. When stock falls, it means people are selling the stock and there's more sellers than buyers. So the stock price drops because people don't see any return anymore in that stock. And this is very simplistic, but that's generally how the market works. So our goal this week is first of all, to understand this risk and return by this capital asset pricing model, the role that beta plays in this, and making sure we understand, for example, here's a company called Blandy. They have a beta of 4.81, excuse me, a, a return of, of uh, to calculate it in their beta calculation. And naturally, you do not have to worry about this calculation, but I wanna show you how beta is calculated. It's the uh, standard deviation of the market compared to the company to, uh, multiplied by the standard D or the price of the stock in, the, in its beta calculation. And then you get a beta of 0.6, where average beta is one, Blandy's stock is less than one, so it's less risky in the market. If we take the risk-free rate of 4% and multiply the beta times the market premium, we get 4% plus 3%, which the company has a required rate of return of 7%. Now, what does that tell the company? It tells the company that they have to invest in assets that are generating at least a 7% return to satisfy the needs that the investors place in them that give them the money. If they don't make 7% of their money, people are gonna start selling the stock or calling in loans. It gives a point of reference. Many people call that rate the hurdle rate, the opportunity cost but that's the basic return requirement of a company based on their risk in the market. Remember the market premium is at 5% is calculated by taking the risk of the premium return in the market, like the standard and Poor's 500 and the risk-free rate. So in this case, the return in the market was 9%. The risk-free rate is 4%. That means the market premium is 5%. That times the company's beta and we get our required rate of return. Investors look at this all the time. Companies monitor, monitor this all the time. It gives them the status of their capital 
in the market. So notice here how beta can change. If beta is like in this case, we just looked at for brandy, if beta is 0.6, we have a return requirement of 7%. But if our beta is a little bit higher at one, notice it's now 9%. And notice if our beta is even higher, which higher risk, 1.3, 10.5%. So notice the higher the risk of a company, the more expensive and the higher the amount that is required for them to attract capital and keep their investors happy. And that's why risk is so important for companies' financial management. They don't want to have a lot of bad debt. They don't want to have a lot of poor performing assets because that'll drive up the beta and make their money more expensive. Very important concept this first week. So these are, this is a short little presentation of the definitions of risk that I want you to be familiar with. And so look over this PowerPoint this week. It gives you a little bit of background of what some of the videos you'll be looking at. And uh, in our case study work beginning in a couple of weeks is you're going to take that risk of beta for your particular firms that you're finding this week and doing some analysis on that. So you have a, a few things to do this coming week, uh, not too much, but first and foremost is get familiar with Blackboard, get familiar with how to use it, get familiar with coming onto it on a daily basis, hopefully knock on wood to make sure all uh, any additional things are posted, make sure you keep up to date with the material. The second thing is to post to the discussion forum. Tell me a little bit about yourself. It's good for all your fellow students to know where what you are. And maybe some of, of you already had some classes with some of the students in our course. And also pick a company that you would like to tra track over the course of these eight weeks of our of our course. Uh, that company has to be publicly traded. State a little explanation in a couple sentences of why you selected that company. And then find me the risk or the market risk of that company by locating their beta. Beta can be found by just Googling it or by going to Yahoo Finance and pulling up the company. And right on the summary page in Yahoo Finance is the beta information. But I want you to begin the thinking on that. Also, this, another thing you need to do this week is read this article that's in week one, Efficient, Chaotic, What's the New Finance? Even though this article was, re was written in 1993, which probably before some of you were even born, maybe, uh, it's, it's very relevant to today. And I want you to read this article. It's about uh, 12 pages long. Study that. We'll discuss that next week. And also, this will be a reference point in our first case study. So that's uh, an introduction to week number one. It's pretty short and sweet this week. We just have to make sure we're up to speed on risk and return. Look at that PowerPoint. Look at the couple of videos. Understanding the Blackboard site. Tell us a little bit about yourself and pick a company. Not too much this week. So I stand uh, by and ready. If you have any questions, I'll be available Thursday evening. If you just want to sign on and say hi to me and introduce yourself on video on Zoom. Uh, that's always nice. Sometimes I like to keep in touch with students and at least be able to see their faces every now and then. Being an online class, sometimes that difficult. So uh, please feel free to pop on every Thursday evening. And I look forward to working with you all. This is a great class. It should help you with not only your own management of finance in your corporate jobs and your careers, but also spe specifically in your personal financial management with some of your investments. So I look forward to working with you all and it's been a, it's gonna be fun. Now, I don't know about fun, but it'll, it'll be okay. So look forward to this every Monday with these videos. We'll see you down the line and have a great week. And again, welcome to our class. Adios. <laughs>